as we know it. Now the end of the world as we know it. Uh-huh. We're getting there. Hazel, thanks for joining. Richard, good to see you. Kyle Van Vleck, good to see you, buddy. Awesome, I uh, believe I toured your uh, ranch at some point. Watched your cattle dogs do their catlin. Let's see. Hey there, Jane. Why, thank you, young lady. You're pretty entertaining yourself. Oh, it's happy hour, folks. Quarantine kitchen happy hour. The greatest happy hour that ever was since the end of the world. Ah, so um, I am going to reevaluate the uh, heat underneath my pan here. I'm going to turn up the uh, uh, hash. It's cruising along. And I'm going to give that a little turn using my little wood spoon. Very gentle here. Oh, yes. Those onions are starting to get really caramelized in there. Oh, things are looking delicious. I'm digging it. It's awesome. We're going to be working sage into that in a little bit. It's going to be really good. All right. So, um, other things that I am going to uh, need here, okay? I need a little bit of oil to saute with, so I'm just going to use my... my bacon duck fat that, that I have here for that. Um, I'm thinking about everything I need for saute, okay? Uh, let's see other things that I need. I need a little bit of um, oil uh, to saute. Oh, I just grabbed that. Oh, I got mushrooms here. That's what I wanted to do. Let's talk about these mushrooms, okay? Now, I got these ginormous cremini mushrooms, or maybe they're portobellini mushrooms, or whatever you want to call them, but these guys are monsters. I thought I would buy these because there's a lot less surface area on these guys and less chance to go bad. They'll hold up longer for my quarantine kitchen, so that's why I bought them. Now, many chefs will tell you never, never, never wash your mushrooms. I'm not one of those guys. Um, sometimes, you know, not all, but sometimes those mushrooms are grown in manure, right? And, and I don't know what you guys call manure, but I call it feces, okay? Um, that manure, it might have been sterilized. It might be A-OK -okay as a growth medium for mushrooms, but as a personal rule, I try to serve as little fecal matter as possible to my guests. So I really do recommend to all of my students that if I'm going to eat those mushrooms, I'm your end user, I would prefer that you wash them for me. Um, I'm going to wash these super, super quick. I don't want to cut them up first and then wash them. I, I don't want to expose surface area to moisture, so I'm going to get them underneath water and out of water. I'm going to dry them off as quickly as I can. I'm going to get them nice and clean and and then I'm going to cut them up and they're going to be prepped and ready to go for the next stage. Okay, so mushrooms, they're going to be right back. Super fast. Well, super fly. Okay. I had a couple of pieces of uh, dookie that didn't want to come off of there. Vodka 30 here, looking good. Mm -hmm. Giving that hash another toss. I'm going to start poking it with a knife here in a minute here. I'm going to start thinking it might be done. Now, let me show you these mushrooms. I got to get a little space here, sorry. Boom. I think I got it. I think you guys can see them. And what I'm going to do is just cut these in large chunks, basically. They are just monstrous pieces. So I'm just going to go straight across, and I want chunks rather than just straight slices out of this. I like chunky. I always do wedges rather than just straight slices across. Besides, these would just be enormous slices. I think I will cut that off and throw that in my stock pot today. That is an enormous piece of stem. Stems can be a little woody, but they're excellent for flavor. Boom! And another. Cut it in half. I can even double these guys up. I'm sure you guys know this trick. Double it up. It gets done in twice the time, but that's not all. It looks pretty, okay? So I got a bunch of mushrooms that I'm going to work into this saute. I'm showing you a very, very basic saute dish here. I don't even know if it has a name. Sauteed pork tenderloin with mushrooms, white wine, a little bit of demi gloss. I do happen to have some, some secret stash here. We did a, a short rib class the other day, and I'm using some of the... the uh, um, delicious uh, uh, sauce, that cooking liquid from those short ribs for my pork tenderloin dish today. It's not the kind of thing most people have laying around. I'm going to give my uh, veggies a little jab here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. 
Yes. Yes. I think I'm going to just uh, kick these veggies off to the side. I'm going to bring another pan over here because we're going to see some saute here in a minute. Those veggies are essentially done. I've got a few finishes, a few flourishes. So I'm still working on my mise en place, that, that term, that, that perpetual state of readiness. My mise en place for my uh, um, saute dish, okay? Uh, other things that I have here, I've got some uh, parsley leaves right here. And I also have some sage leaves that I am using for my hash over here. And I, my hash is done. I think it's about time I work those sage leaves into it. So I'm actually gonna do that real quick right now. I've got just a few leaves. I kept this all in one piece, this poor little scraggly piece of sage, but I wanted to show it to you. It just looks so horrible. Uh, but uh, uh, the rest of it, I actually took the um, kind of funky looking sage and I threw it into some salt to desiccate along with some uh, celery leaves. And that's just gonna dry out over time. And then I'm gonna pulse that in a food processor and make some um, uh, poultry seasoning salt basically is what that'll be. I threw in a little bit of uh, sage, it's right here. Uh, Again, it was sage, thyme leaves, um, uh, uh, I put in some parsley, some celery leaves, I threw in some dried thyme as well, and I cracked a bunch of pepper into it, and then I buried it all in salt, and I'm gonna let it all desiccate. And then, like I said, I'll pulse it on a food processor, and it's a poultry seasoning. It smells delicious. Okay, so I've got some sage leaves here. I'm gonna cut these guys up, and I'm gonna work them into those veggies over there. This is gonna take one sec. I'm just doing this real quick. I'm going straight across the leaves. We call this a chiffon on. I'm gonna work that on in to these veggies, just fresh sage. I'm not even stirring it in there yet. I'm just letting them get used to their environment. <laughs> All right. So back to my, uh, my dish here. I mentioned that I had some beautiful brown stock to use for this dish. Where did I put that? There it is. So there it is. I made some short ribs last week, and one of the things that I uh, um, that I do with my short ribs is I will save a little bit of the cooking liquid when I'm done. And hey, you know, I got a little saute or something I want to do. There's dinner, right? It's a base for a dinner. When I was a saute cook, I had all kinds of little bits and bobs that I had stashed around, just like this extra little stuff that would just like push this thing over the edge that I could add a spoonful to it, and it just makes it crazy, right? Um, uh, uh, cooks are crafty guys, right? And this is just kind of one of those things. So that's going to be our brown liquid that I use for my sauce today. Um, but I also could be using this um, broth that I had earlier. Um, I, I also want some of this around too. I used it in my pilaf earlier. And if my sauce gets a little bit too um, over reduced or something, I'm going to be hitting it with a little bit of this broth. Okay, so I do want that as well. Um, my mise en place is uh, kind of stacking up. I got fat, I got liquid. Ah, I need a little bit of wine. Seriously, I need a little bit of wine. Um, I've got a, uh, this is not a commercial, but uh, I'm drinking a uh, Cal California Sauvignon Blanc. I think that'll be an excellent wine. It, it's just kind of a dry white wine that I can use uh, in my sauce. Um, whatever this wine tastes like now, it's gonna taste completely different when I get done with sauteing. I'm gonna cook this stuff down into syrup, basically. It's gonna have a completely different flavor profile. So um, we're gonna be using a little bit of this. I wouldn't use like a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc with that grapefruit flavor kind of thing they got going on. Uh, this California will be much nicer for this, okay? Um, so I need a little of that. And uh, I'm trying to work around my camera, guys. I'm not used to that. Uh, let's see. And finally, the last thing I need is, um, who has open bottles of wine in the fridge? Just me, today. Um, the last thing I need is a little bit of butter. This is going to be a finish to our sauce at the end, okay? Now, what you're going to see here is, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start saute with a sear, okay? Saute is, is basically the same as searing, and you've seen searing in a couple of classes already, okay, uh, of mine, and probably seen it on food TV a, a half million times, right? Um, uh, uh, <clears throat> um, now, the first step is searing, as I said, but after that searing happens, you're going to remove the meat from the pan. I'm going to place it on a plate, and then you are going to have um, uh, 
the fond, the, the little brown bits on the bottom of this pan left over after that sear, and that's when I'm going to bring in my wine. I'm going to deglaze with that. This is what we call the first deglaze, or at least what I call it, right? I'm going to deglaze that pan, and I'm going to cook that all the way down to O sec, okay? And then most sautés will have a second deglaze where that's where I'm going to throw in my stock or my, my demi-gloss or whatever it is, my brown sauce, my mother sauce, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, once I get that in there, I might reduce down a little bit more, and once it's about sauce consistency, I can finish with butter and uh, and then I've got a finished sauce. Very important when I finish with butter, um, as this is um, finishing, it is not on the fire. I take it off the fire, I get, it, I get it to the boil, I turn it off, and then anytime I'm doing butter, cheese, cream, anything like that, um, off the heat, turn that off, work those dairy products in there really, really slow and nice until they're smooth, and then your dish is done. Don't turn the fire back on once you've got cheese or butter or something like that in your sauce, okay? So that's kind of what you're gonna see here. I'm gonna work my way from start to finish on this thing. Let's take another look at this peel off. Oh my God. Gosh, let's see what it's looking like. I'm going to dig down in there and uh, see one of these uh, grains here and see if anything's happening. Because, uh, oh yeah, they're just not even taking off at all. We may not get this uh, peel off done, in fact. I feel like i got to keep going on this saute and everything else is kind of done. So I think what you're going to see is just the pork chops with the uh, hash over here. And then you're going to see this peel off maybe, maybe if we get to it. But the important thing is, is that you saw the steps of making that peel off. And even more important is I at least get to eat it later. Okay. So that's kind of the most important thing. Um, let's see. Before I saute, there's just one more thing I wanted to do. And that is I'm going to finish up these vegetables by cutting up an apple. I, uh, already kind of washed this guy off and took off the stem or took off the sticker, of course, cut them on up. And I'm going to use a paring knife for this. And you know, when I'm adding apple into a dish, I don't like to cook it a lot of the time. So I'm just throwing raw apple into this hash so you're crunching into stuff. I'm leaving the skin on this thing. And I'm just tossing it on in, in pieces about the same size as everything else. And all of the flavor that's on those veggies is gonna kind of work into these apples and it's gonna be beautiful. So let me get this cut up. I got a little sage in there. I wanna check my seasoning. And I'm also going to hit it with a little bit of nutmeg. And that's it, super simple. Sage, garlic, nutmeg, or no, I didn't even put garlic in this. This was just the vegetables, some sage, the apple, and I'm gonna hit it with nutmeg. Here's the last piece of apple. I uh, do that a lot, just throw a fresh apple into something right at the end. It's delicious, it's like a vegetable in there. It's like a veggie. And then uh, my nutmeg. I've got to check my seasoning, my salt on this. And uh, I say it in every class. The last thing you do before you put something on a plate is check your seasoning and your consistency. Now, I don't have a liquid here or anything. I don't have to worry about consistency, but I do need to worry about my seasoning here. So let me get that um, stirred in. I'm gonna hit it with a little more black pepper. I'm gonna do black pepper today. Yeah, ha, 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 ha. it feels good. Oh yeah, oh yeah, today is black pepper. Stirring it on in, and it's just, it's shiny, it's beautiful, tons of color, and that apple's just barely gonna soften up, if you can see that. That apple is just barely going to soften up over there. It's looking beautiful. It'll get a little shine, a little more shine to it. Okay, so that's going to go off to the side. And I think, I don't know if we're going to see peel off today, guys. That stuff is rock hard, okay? I need to, uh, I think what I'll do is get rid of my cutting board here. And I'll be able to lay my mise en place out. And you guys can see it all a little bit better. I'll put it in order here. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna start with in my pan is a little bit of fat. The next thing is gonna be the meat, okay? Now, when I'm dropping this meat in the pan, I want that pan smoking hot, okay? I'm gonna, I've been 